Hello fellow Scratchers! Do you like car simulations? Ever wondered how to create simple yet realistic car mechanics in your own Scratch games? I'm Griff Patch and today we are going to learn how to do just that. A basic front wheel drive car not only steers from the front, but also is powered by the front wheels too. This means that the front of the car both points it where to go, but also moves in that same direction. The back wheels are lazy things and they just happily follow a car length behind wherever the front wheels take them. This is a wonderfully simple concept and you absolutely must stay tuned until the very end because I have a real treat for you where we take this idea even further. And you're going to love it, I know you will. But first let's mock up the movement of these front wheels. Delete sprite 1 and create a new sprite, naming it front wheels. In the costume editor draw up a simple arrow to indicate where the wheels are pointing. Make sure the start of the arrow is positioned at the sprite center here. This will allow it to rotate around this point. We'll start when a green flag is clicked. Create a new variable named zoom for all sprites. You'll find it useful to be able to set the size of the car using this later on. Set it to 2 so we're zoomed in twice as big. Set size to 100 multiplied by zoom and position the sprite at an xy of 0 by 0. Add in a forever loop. And for now, remembering the front wheel just points where we want it to go, we point the wheel towards the mouse pointer. We can test this. And yeah, that's working as expected. So next we'll deal with the forward and back movement. Add a new custom block for this naming it acceleration with an input variable of joystick Y. We'll drop this new block into the forever loop and use a neat trick of key up arrow pressed minus key down arrow pressed to give a one for forward and a minus one for backwards. Watch my other videos for an explanation of this. Then under the define acceleration hat block, simply move zoom multiplied by joystick Y. We multiplied by zoom here so that the car moves faster when we are zoomed in. Run the project and test that the forward and backwards arrow keys move the front wheel sprite arrow forward and backwards. Pretty standard stuff so far, but you just wait, this is about to get very exciting. The front wheels are now manoeuvrable, which is enough to allow us to experiment with adding the rest of the car. Make a new sprite, naming it Car Body. I'll draw a simple outline of the car Mine is 58 by 35 pixels. But this is all pretty rough. Make sure it's centered by dragging it until it snaps to the middle. I'll just paint on the back and front windows and a roof. Now select the whole car and while holding the shift key, drag it to the right so that the center of the costume is between where you would imagine the back wheels to be. This is again where the back of the car is to rotate around. Now in the code, when green flag is clicked, set the size to 100 multiplied by zoom. To allow the car body to be attached to the wheels, we need to record how long the distance between the car's front and back wheels is. Make a new variable named body length, and for my car I'll set it to around 34, but you can try different values if things are slightly off. More on that later. Go to front layer and enter a ferro loop. Now a car's body always follows its front wheels, so start by pointing the car at the front wheels. Then move the car body up to the wheels using a go to front wheels. But that will be too close, so move back by the body length, that is move 0 minus body length multiplied by zoom. Now this is exciting, run the project. And look at that, it's like magic, oh cool! With these few scripts we have a car that is following the front wheels perfectly. I can even move backwards and the back end swings out so realistically. You might already have deduced that this is actually the basis for some really cool inverse kinematics. Anyhow, I digress. Can you notice a slight lag in the connection between the front and back sprites where the arrow appears to stretch away from the car body? This is caused by the car body scripts running before the front wheel scripts, and so it is lagging one frame behind the movements. To fix this, we will replace the green flag in the car body sprite with a when I receive block, making a new event named car body. 
and we'll get rid of the old green flag block. Then, in the front wheel sprite, broadcast car body, just before the forever loop. That will ensure the front wheel scripts run first, then the car body next. Getting in first with the front wheel scripts is key to ordering the loop execution. I will be making a more technical tutorial on this subject later, so watch out for that. Run the project again, and there. The front wheel arrow is now firmly attached without any stretching. OK, so this is coming together really quickly now. Let's add some more realistic acceleration scripts. To record the current car speed, make a new variable named speed for all sprites and set it to zero. Then make another new variable named power to record the power of the car's engine and we'll set it to 0 0.3. You can play with these values to suit your game. One more new variable named brake for controlling how quickly the car slows down and we'll set that to 0 0.96. The closer to one this value is, the longer the car takes to slow down. Right, we're going to update the accelerate scripts over here. We'll use the standard acceleration script, so change speed by power multiplied by joystick y to accelerate the car, but then set speed to speed multiplied by brake to slow the car down. The first one is a change, the second one is a set. Don't forget to change the move block to use zoom multiplied by speed. We can test this again now. Oh yeah, this is cool. The car is feeling much more nippy. Hmm, I think we might need to zoom out a bit as we are quickly running out of space to drive. Select the front wheel sprite and set zoom to one. Ah, that's a lot better. We are much more zoomed out. Now we just need to make the steering more realistic too. We want to simulate a steering wheel that can be turned left and right relative to the car. In the front wheel sprite, make a new variable named steer for this sprite only. And we'll start by setting it to zero. Now create a new custom block, naming it turn, with an input of joystick x. We'll use it right away with the value key right arrow pressed, subtract key left arrow pressed. Within this define block, we'll code steering like we coded acceleration. So change steer by 4 multiplied by joystick x. 4 is the turning power. A larger value gives a faster turn. To bring the steering wheel back to the centre, set steer to steer times by 0 0.9. OK, we want the front wheels to initially point in the same direction as the car body. So remove this old point towards mouse. And then add in a point in direction. Careful not to use the point towards here. And get the direction of the car body. But then we add our new steer variable to this to give the effect of steering relative to the car body. Yay, it's test time. Ah, nice. I can turn my steering wheel from the left and right arrows. That feels pretty natural. And if I use the forward and back keys, oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. We've suddenly got an awesome car under our control. I just love the reversing, it's so natural. Notice how the reverse turning circle is much tighter than when moving forward. Oh, it's so cool to play with. This is cause for celebration. A nice paint job, perhaps. Ah, beautiful sporty red. So what next? Have you ever played one of those parking games? You know, where you have to manoeuvre a car into a parking slot. How about we create something a bit like that? Start by making a new sprite, and I'll name it Target. To gauge the required parking spot size, we can copy in the car costume to our new sprite. We'll draw a nice rectangle around it using it as a guide. Then delete the car and we can centre the rectangle. I'll name this sprite Outline. We need a second duplicate costume. We'll name it Fill. That will be used to detect sprite collisions within the parking space. Draw a filled rectangle well within the first rectangle and then remove the outside rectangle when happy. Now, when the green flag is clicked, loop forever first switching to the filled costume, and then, with an if-else, check if this filled rectangle is touching the car body. 
If it is, say touching. Otherwise, say nothing. A quick test shows that this works great, but what we really need to know is when the car is fully within the parking space, not overlapping the edge of the costume like it currently can. To do this, duplicate the switch costume and the if, nesting them within the first if. This time we change the costume to outline. So if we are touching the filled area and also touching the outline, then we can say touching outline. But if we are touching the fill and not touching the outline, then we must be fully within the rectangle and we can say win. We should remove this last say block. Now, if we test again, we get the touching outline as we enter the box. But as soon as we are fully within, it changes to win. That's what we wanted. Success. Just switch costume to outline here to ensure it always looks good. We don't ever want the filled rectangle to appear, only the outline. Looking very good. Next up in our game should be adding obstacles to drive around. Before we create these, it would help to better position the car at the start of a level to give us more room to play with. In the front wheel sprite, after setting zoom, broadcast a new message of reset. Then when I receive reset, split off the broadcast car body and add a new broadcast of game on. And then when I receive game on, continue the rest of the scripts. Now let's fix the starting position of the car. Go to minus 180 by minus 60 and point in direction zero, that's up. Lastly, we'll also add a stop other scripts in the sprite to the top of the reset receiver to allow us to break out of the game loop below when the level is reset. We should do the same in the car body sprite. When I receive reset, stop other scripts in this sprite. We'll also then go to minus 180 by minus 80, that's slightly below the other one, and point in direction zero, facing up. Then move the set size and body length up into the reset script. Everything else we'll leave in the when I receive car body. This takes care of all the resetting things nicely. If we run the project, that should now position the car in the bottom left region of the screen. That's a good place to start. Right, now for those obstacles. We'll create a new sprite named Obstacles. Enter an XY position of zero to center the sprite and then draw some simple walls for us to maneuver around. Okay, so we could do with repositioning our parking space to fit the level. So switch to the target sprite. And if you can actually grab it, I'm afraid it's a bit fiddly, then position it to where you want it to be. Now in the target sprites code, add a when I receive game on receiver. We need to set up this level, so make a new custom block named setup. Drag it under the receiver, and for now we'll simply use a go to block. If you are lucky, it will be pre populated with the position of the car's parking space. Otherwise, enter the numbers in to match the X and Y shown under the stage view. We also need a point in direction to match its direction. It's a good idea to set size to 100 times zoom so that the parking space matches our car's size. Right, we won't need this green flag block anymore, but before we move from the setup to looking for wins, just add a small wait of 0.2 seconds to ensure the level fully resets. We don't want to mistrigger a win until we are sure that the car and the parking space have been repositioned. Then join up the scripts. I can just test that running the project does indeed reset the position. And yeah, it does spring back to where we'd expect. To detect the collisions between the car and the obstacle sprite, select the car body sprite and add an if touching obstacles at the bottom of the forever loop. If we touch, then simply broadcast reset. That should put us right back to the start of the level. We might as well check that out. Yep, certainly can't get through these walls now. And driving carefully around the course, I should be able to get to the parking space. Yes, I am a master driver. I win. That is already surprisingly fun. So I'd expect now to be taken on to the next level. In the front wheel sprite, make a new variable named level for all sprites. 
and set it to level 1 after the green flag is clicked. Back in the target sprite, we need to upgrade our winning scripts. Where we say win, broadcast the new message win. And we can safely remove all three of these say blocks now. A new sprite is needed, name it win. Using the pixel font, I'm going to make an appropriate congratulatory message. You win. So when green flag is clicked, go to zero zero. Then when I receive game on, hide the sprite. Next, when I receive win, celebrate by stopping the other scripts in this sprite. This will be useful later. And show our winning message. We should go to the front layer and we'll wait for two seconds. Now, just in case the player is still holding down any keys, wait until no keys are pressed. We can do this using a not key any pressed before changing level by one. That will take us to the next level and then we broadcast reset to set that level up. If we test the project on reaching our goal, the you win message appears and two seconds later, the level resets and look, we are on level two, apparently. Only we don't have a no level two yet. Quickly then, to the obstacles sprite to design a second level. Just a little code here. When I receive game on, switch costume to the level variable. Then go to XY of zero, zero. Jump into the costume designer now and let's get drawing. Costume two will be a level of cones for me. Hmm. Hmm, I may have overdone this one. Keeping things simple is always a good idea. Don't just copy me here though. Do whatever you feel like and have fun. Now, I need to reposition the parking space to match the level. When happy, click into the target sprite. Wrap the first scripts in an if and check for level of one. Now we can duplicate the if for level two and fill in the new positions and rotations. Something like this. Let's test. I'll just whiz through the first level and wait for it. Yay, we've made it to level two. The level costume has switched and the parking space has moved. Excellent. Now you should have no difficulty in adding as many levels as takes your fancy. Hmm, hold on though. My car is too big to get around this level at all. I knew that second level was gonna cause me problems. So we have a few options here. We could redesign the level probably a good idea. Or perhaps we should shrink our car down even more. Hmm. In the front wheel sprite, I'll set zoom to 0 0.75. And now, oh yeah, like a pro. So to wrap things up quickly, if you wanted a reset level key, we could do that in the win sprite by adding a when R key pressed, stop other scripts in sprite, and broadcast reset. A level skip key can be done in just the same way, but from the L key, for example, and with a change level by one before the broadcast to reset. If you wanted a timer, well then, I'm sure you could figure out a way, but if you want a quick script, then make a new timer variable for all sprites, then make a new custom block named set timer with an input of time. We'll set time to zero under the when I receive game on. And within the custom block, set the variable timer to time divided by 100. Now I want this timer to only begin timing when the car moves forward or back. So add a quick wait for 0 0.1 seconds for the setup to complete, and then wait until speed is not equal to zero. Then reset scratch this timer and enter a forever loop. In here, we'll use our set timer block and pass in the floor of Scratch's timer multiplied by 100. Give that a quick run. Now, see the timer is not moving, but we can wiggle our wheels around. I like that. Then, as soon as we start moving, the timer begins. Crashing the car causes time to reset. And then, when we complete the level, the timer stops. It stops because we added a stop other scripts in Sprite on the win receiver earlier. Now, one thing I'd like to change is that our car rolls on past the parking space when we win. We should probably stop it moving, but 
the choice is yours. To stop it, in the front wheel sprite under the game on receiver, add a wait until before the forever loop, waiting until no key is pressed. This is actually to ensure the game doesn't accidentally begin after the level resets. Now add a when I receive win, and we will stop other scripts in sprite. This should end the main game loop when we have beaten a level and therefore stop the car. I'll just complete the level and the car has stopped. Excellent. But hold on, shouldn't the level have progressed to level 2 by now? Oh gosh, I think we have a bug. Okay, after extensive debugging, I have found the problem. It's here, in the target sprite. We broadcast win here, but this forever loop keeps running after the level is complete, and so keeps broadcasting win over and over. This in turn keeps the game from ever progressing. Easy fix though. Drop in a stop this script, that's this script, after the broadcast. And here we go again. And yeah, job done. But this second level is still a monster. Seriously, this should not be a second level. Lol, one might rage quit. So where do we go from here? Well, there are loads of options open to you and you can go to town with designing your levels. You might even like to add something that says which way round the car needs to face to trigger the parking. Some in reverse, for example. Or have flags to collect before you're allowed to park. Add a high score at the best time for each level, or even maybe moving obstacles on the level to get past. But before we wrap up, I want to show you something really, really cool. This is what I told you about at the beginning. Do you know we can also simulate articulated trucks with this car physics simulation? Watch this. In the car sprite, I'll just duplicate the first costume and redraw it as the front of a truck. This is more of a European design with a flat front. I need to update the body length variable to account for the shorter length. 25 perhaps will do. Now duplicate the entire car body sprite, naming it trailer. For the trailer's costume, we extend out the original car costume to the right. Mine is like 90 pixels long or so now. This will link onto the back of the truck, something like so. I need to adjust its starting position to be lower than the car body was. Minus 150 will do. The body length is much longer. Something like 70, but we can come back and tweak that. Add a new event receiver, and I'll call it trailer. Update the point towards and go to to make them follow the car body instead of the car wheels. Lastly, in the front wheel sprite, add in a broadcast trailer after the other broadcast of car body. And test. Hmm. Okay, so the trailer's body length is too small. Click back into the trailer sprite and try a bigger value for body length, maybe 90. Oh no, too long. I'll go with 85. Ah, better. Let's give it a test drive. Oh man, would you look at that? That is so cool. Can you imagine what we could do with this? We don't even have to stop at one trailer. You could recreate a whole train. Anyway, if you wanted to go on and make levels that work with this trailer, then you probably want to make sure the parking space is bigger and longer. And also trigger off touching the trailer, not the car body any longer. But that's up to you. For today, we will end here but I do have more to share on this subject. So look out for a tutorial on that in the near future. I do hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and that it's inspired you to create some awesome Scratch projects. Please do smash the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to avoid missing my next exciting video. Thank you for watching and Scratch on guys.